badmouth modern technology all you want, but as someone who typed her early college papers on a beast of a machine from the 1940s, I gotta say, technology has its perks. Way back in college, the only typewriter I had access to was my dad's old royal typewriter. The ordeal started with having to lift this 30 pound monster up from the floor of my parents' closet. I didn't even know about lifting with your legs, not your back back then. It was heavy. Then I'd carry it down the hallway to the kitchen table and give my fingers a workout trying to strike the keys hard enough to make a clear mark. And don't even get me started on the time I finished typing an entire philosophy paper and then had to go back in with whiteout to correct the spelling of perceive about 15 different times. Come on, Marcy, I before E except after C. Complaining aside, she is a real beauty, isn't she? As far as I can tell, this model is from 1942 or thereabouts. After being inspired by a painting tutorial by none other than the great James Gurney, I'll link his tutorial below, I painted my vintage typewriter in blue-gray and yellow ochre watercolors. Getting it in there. All right, all right. Oh my gosh, it's already coming off. Do you see that? It's like silver instead of brown. I don't know if this thing had ever been cleaned during its 80 or so years of existence. And the thing was as clogged and gunked and greasy and jammed as 80 years of not cleaning can do. I used denatured alcohol to clean it. What's denatured alcohol, you ask? I didn't know either, but I fell down an interesting rabbit hole finding out. Ethanol and alcohol is used as a solvent and fuel, but it's also used for recreational drinking, which is heavily taxed. Manufacturers do not have to pay the big liquor taxes if the alcohol is denatured by having poisons added to it, resulting in a mixture that is a cheap solvent or fuel that cannot be safely drank as alcohol. Yet poor people who couldn't get their hands on regular ethanol, especially during prohibition, would sometimes drink denatured alcohol, resulting in blindness and deaths. Such a disturbing history, but it sure cuts through the grime. I had a lot of fun painting this typewriter. I sketched it out first and then transferred my sketch using tracing paper and transfer paper. And I really did appreciate the tutorial I had watched where James Gurney talked about using these colors and dividing the object up into different planes to get the three-dimensional look. As you can see, I used masking fluid to keep some areas of the illustration the white of the paper and I love the moment of peeling off the masking fluid and seeing the bright white emerge from underneath. 
By the way, my husband and I unrolled the new ribbon I had ordered from their plastic spools and rewound the ribbon around the vintage metal spools. Messy work, but worth it in my opinion. I decided to preserve some of the old ribbon in my sketchbook spread, along with the sketches and some of the typed text. At this point, my illustration was just about finished, but I did go in with a little bit of fine liner to tidy up my edges and add a little bit of extra detail and shading. fun to make this illustration and I'm really glad to get this beautiful old machine cleaned up and up and running again. curious to hear about if any of you are attached to some old machines that have maybe become somewhat obsolete. I have my Graham's old Singer sewing machine. I have a couple very old cameras. My husband has an old wooden tennis racket. They don't make them like that anymore. So I arranged some old book pages into my final spread. I want to thank you so much for watching and I really appreciate those of you who have been giving kind comments and encouragement. It is so motivating to hear some feedback back. So I really appreciate that.